this morning, uh, we'll start sharing some teachings from um, the scripture or the sacred text known as the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Uh, this particular version is with the commentary of Swamiji, of Swami Vishnu Devananda. And for those who are not familiar, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika is considered to be one of the main uh, authoritative texts on the path of Hatha Yoga, uh, coming from either the 14th or 15th century, uh, and written by a great yogi by the name of Yogi Swatmarama. And Yogi Swatmarama was part of this uh, lineage of great masters of Hatha Yoga. And as we study Hatha Yoga, we learn that this is a knowledge uh, that was traditionally passed on from teacher to student, teacher to student. And then one of the earliest writings we have about this knowledge of Hatha Yoga is coming from this text, uh, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, from around the 14th century. There are other also important texts known as the Grehanda Samhita and the Shiva Samhita. But in our tradition, we mostly study uh, this text, as this was the text that Swami Vishnu Devananda was following in his own uh, sadhana of Hatha Yoga. So what this text is, is basically a manual for the complete path of Hatha Yoga, uh, from the very beginning, in terms of even describing ethical conduct that the Hatha Yogi, he or she, should follow, until... Uh, reaching the highest levels of the path of Hatha Yoga. So the whole path is illustrated here, chapter by chapter. Actually, each chapter is a certain progression in the sadhana. The first chapter talks about, uh, also a lot about how to prepare the place of the Hatha Yoga practice and the ethical foundation and asanas. Asanas are really the first, the main subject of the first chapter. And then in the second chapter, there is description especially of pranayama, that is the next really stage within the path of Hatha Yoga. And then the third chapter talks about advanced practices known as bandhas and mudras. These are illustrated in the third chapter. And then the fourth chapter is a chapter on the Hatha Yoga Samadhi or the deep meditations that in the path of Hatha Yoga are prescribed. So really it is a it's a manual, a sacred manual for the complete path of, of Hatha Yoga. So uh, we'll share some teachings uh, from this text. Now, to really practice what is here in this uh, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, definitely one requires an able teacher, an able teacher. These are very advanced practices that are illustrated here, and one needs really an able teacher, the guidance on performing or practicing these uh, techniques. But even uh, if we're not uh, practicing everything that is here in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, the study of the text gives us a better understanding of how to approach the Hatha Yoga that we are practicing, the basic asanas and the pranayama. It gives us a bigger uh, picture and an understanding of what Hatha Yoga is all is really ultimately about. And the more that we have a clear understanding, uh, the more powerful our personal sadhana will become. Uh, we'll know really uh, what it's ultimately meant for. So what I wanted to first just, what we wanted to share with you this morning, first is the first uh, verse of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, as it is known, it's titled as a Mangala Shloka, or meaning a verse of auspiciousness, a verse of blessing, containing all the blessings of the scripture uh, in this first verse. So I wanted, I wanted to share with you this this morning. And here uh, Yogi Swatmarama writes, Mangala Shloka, Salutations to the primeval being, Lord Shiva, who is the instructor of the Hatha Yoga Vidya, Vidya knowledge, to Parvati, which shines bright like a ladder for one desirous to climb the heights of the most excellent Raja Yoga. So I'll repeat again. Salutations to the primeval being Lord Shiva, who is the instructor of the Hatha Yoga Vidya to Parvati, 
which shines bright like a ladder for one desirous to climb the heights of the most excellent Raja Yoga. And here, when Yogi Swatmarama is referring to Raja Yoga, he is referring to the ability for Samadhi. Raja Yoga means the capacity for that deep state of meditation, when the mind has been purified and is capable of deep uh, contemplation of, of reality. And so what we learn in this first verse, Yogi Swatmarama begins in a traditional way, of saluting the lineage and saluting the source of where this knowledge comes from in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika presents that the source of the Hatha Yoga knowledge is coming from Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati. That this is really the source, meaning that this is a divine knowledge. Hatha Yoga is not something that some person invented, but it's coming from the Supreme Being. And it is a sacred knowledge that is designed to help to take the soul back to the source, back to Shiva. And what uh, Yogi Sotmarama explains that this Hatha Yoga Vidya or the knowledge of Hatha Yoga is like a, a, a shining light that serves as a ladder to climb to the, the ladder to reach Raja Yoga. Meaning that this knowledge is meant for taking the spiritual seeker up to that capacity of Samadhi. So Swami Vishnu is to explain that Hatha Yoga is the practical way to achieve Raja Yoga. That Hatha Yoga ends where Raja Yoga begins. Raja Yoga begins meaning Samadhi. So Swamiji used to explain, you see, the whole science of Hatha Yoga is a science of prana. And the science, of course, of Raja Yoga is the science of the mind, the science of the vrittis. Now, the vrittis being more subtle eh, are more difficult to control. So Raja Yoga is considered to be a higher path. And Hatha Yoga, the science of prana, is a preparation, as prana being more gross, more accessible. So really the capacity to achieve Raja Yoga is based on the mastery of Hatha Yoga. That's what uh, Swamiji would teach. That we practice Hatha Yoga in order to learn how to control the prana, and as a result of that, we become qualified to be able to control the mind. See, if we cannot control the prana, we should not have the expectation that we'll be able to control the mind, as the mind is much more subtle. To practice Raja Yoga doesn't mean just to sit for half an hour you know, without uh, doing anything else. To practice Raja Yoga means that deep, deep knowledge of the mind and that uh, great capacity for the mind to become totally still. But if we're not able to be aware of the breath, be aware of the prana and know how to control the prana, we cannot expect that we'll be able to control the mind. So Swamiji explains that this path of Hatha Yoga is a preparation to be able to be qualified to Raja Yoga. Now, as we mentioned, the whole scripture is describing this path of from the very beginning until achieving Raja Yoga. What are the, all the different practices that we do in the path of Hatha Yoga to achieve that? Now, what we wanted to just introduce this morning, and we'll explain more in detail this evening, is in the first chapter, which is really the, a lot of preparation is described in the first chapter, there is a description of the main causes of failure in our sadhana and the main causes of success. Uh, what are the things that we need to learn to overcome in order to be successful and what are the things that we should cultivate if we want to succeed in this path of Hatha Yoga, meaning in this path of controlling the prana for the sake of controlling the mind. So we'll uh, just introduce this morning and we can explain more uh, this evening. So this is in the first chapter which the first chapter is all focusing about asanas, but even before the asanas are described, there is this uh, explanation about causes of failure and causes of success. So this is uh, verse 15 in the first chapter. 
Yogi is what Marama writes. Yoga is destroyed for the following six. So these are six causes that will make us unable to succeed in the path of, of Hatha Yoga. Overeating, obviously. Uh, too much fatigue, too much talk, following unsuitable observances, niyamas, keeping company with unsuitable people or an unsuitable environment, and being fickle-minded. So I'll, I'll repeat again and then we'll explain a bit. Overeating, too much fatigue, too much talk, following unsuitable observances, keeping company with unsuitable people, and being fickle-minded. So these are the six things that one uh, should be aware of if he or she wants to progress in the path of Hatha Yoga. So what are these six things? First of all, overeating. So overeating, this is obvious that it, Swami Shivananda explains that uh, he would often say that we are digging our graves with our teeth, meaning a nice illustration. But meaning that uh, the main cause of disease is, of course, the improper diet, and especially uh, overeating. Uh, so obviously, if we are not uh, managing what we eat and how we eat, the body will get sick. And if the body is sick, we cannot practice pranayama well, we cannot practice asanas well, we cannot practice meditation. So keeping the body healthy is the foundation for success in our sadhana. In addition to that, even if we're not sick but we just overeat, we cannot practice well any pranayama, any asanas, we'll be sleepy for the practice. So good management over our diet is key for success. And in Hatha Yoga, this is a must, and there is a lot of, there are several verses talking about uh, the diet in Hatha Yoga. Very important because uh, uh, the condition of the body and digestion is, is key for success. So really uh, the yogi and the Hatha Yogi has to learn to treat the act of food as a, as a sacred act. That is the main thing to learn to bring the element of sattva into the process of eating. Here, Yogi Sotmarama explains that one has to dedicate the food to Lord Shiva when, when eating. So it is, becomes a, really, a, the eating becomes an act of worship. Then a, the body will be able to digest well and will be nourished by the food and get a lot of spiritual energy for the sadhana. So, a lot of awareness about the diet is, is uh, important in this uh, path of Hatha Yoga. Then, uh, too much fatigue. So obviously, if we're very tired, just like we cannot meditate well, we are falling asleep, we don't have the energy to concentrate. Same thing, if we're very tired, we will not move more than the Shavasana. You know, there will not be capacity to do the asana as well, and definitely to concentrate in pranayama, we need energy. Of course, the pranayama gives us energy, but if we're very, very tired, we cannot succeed in the sadhana. So Swamiji in the commentary explains that the main thing here is about learning to keep balance. If we are too tired for different reasons, eh, our sadhana will suffer. So one has to be conscious of managing his or her energy well, making sure they're getting sufficient amount of rest and good quality rest, all for the sake of having the energy to concentrate, because the sadhana requires that concentration. Then Swamiji, uh, Yogi Satmarama says, too much talk. So what is the problem with too much talking? Why this is uh, disturbing the sadhana? This leaks the energy out, definitely takes, takes up a lot of energy, of course, the talking. What else? Yes? Uh, 
reinforces rajas. It uh, makes the mind very extroverted. So we can see it is very common for many, many great yogis to be regularly practicing mauna, practicing silence. Swamiji, Swami Vishnu, at times, uh, there were several times, would take one year uh, in silence as a means to uh, go within, to deepen the sadhana. And Swami Shivananda, in his... Uh, main spiritual instructions talks about uh, practicing two hours of silence a day and additional hours on Sundays or in time when you are not obliged to be in certain uh, commitments to take more time for silence. And it's to basically to conserve one's energy which is needed for the meditation and the concentration and to train the mind to become more uh, introspective because without the mind uh, having that tendency for introspection we cannot really succeed in the path of hatha yoga path of hatha yoga the pranayama requires concentration if the mind is agitated and outgoing restless we cannot have the patience to sit and do the pranayama over and over again which when we learn the path of Hatha Yoga, you will see it's not really, the difficulty is not the complicated techniques. The difficulty is to have the willpower to sit again and again and again and watch the inhalation, watch the exhalation again and again. And if the mind is rajasic, there will be no inclination for that. There will be no interest in that no interest, no capacity. So gradually the mind has to become more sattvic for daily activities to have that ability to sit and go within, with the breath, to follow the breath over and over again. So that is too much talking. So the rest we will share this evening. Om Tat Sat.